Welcome, peeps, back to another episode of the Shady Corner Ludecast. I'm your boy Shades, and today I am with Gage. Mostly wholesome content and a stream of a stream of games. I would say between RPG and party games. Uh, on Twitch, a very wholesome, very kind person behind this particular tuber model. Off Twitch though, and this is where we're here. This is this is the interest that we that we're all into. Is a more spicier VTuber interacting with a community with a variety of different types of content, including not safe for work streams, toy recommendations, and a place where basically the fans can interact with Gage. Welcome, Gage, to the podcast. Happy to be here, Shades. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like, I'm honestly like so, it is so weird because on my hit list of people that I wanted to talk to, um, I wasn't actually expecting you to say yes. I, I'll, I'll tell you the truth, like, mm. I was taken aback when you asked me not for any bad reason but because i felt kind of intimidated like my community has kind of really exploded recently and mm -hmm. for the life of me i can't figure out why i i really just feel like i'm just a random person shit posting on twitter and occasionally streaming games but i don't think that's for me to decide so i'm i'm honestly honored to be here on i i think uh the feeling is mutual because I saw, and again, I, I, I watched, I watched some of your VODs. I particularly, uh, I tuned in to a little bit of your birthday stream. Um, and it's so refreshing to see somebody doing something so wholesome. And then even on the lewd side, be just as a wholesome person. <laughs> Well, thank you, thank you. I mean, wholesome, wholesome, and lewd is basically my goal. So, mm -hmm. mission accomplished, I guess. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask, what made you want to become a VTuber, and what made you want to sort of go into the lewd tubing aspect? Um, starting with the VTuber part. I actually have streamed off and on under some different names for quite a long time. I actually started streaming before Twitch as a website was a thing, back when it was still Justin TV. But I, I fell out of the loop and went on a long hiatus, and then I came back a while later, and then I went on another hiatus. And it was actually just earlier this year in March where um, some friends of mine who had been streaming were wanting to rebrand as VTubers. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, that, that could be fun. I've got all these different OCs that live rent-free in my head, and I'm like, maybe I could make one of them into an avatar and use that to interact with. And I ended up doing it with uh, Gage, my mechanic girl, and it, it was really fun. It's really fun to be able to have a face out there for people to see and interact with but still remain behind kind of a shield of anonymity. It actually lets me be a little bit more open because I don't have to worry about people, you know, that I know in real life finding me and coming to some conclusions that I might not want them to come to. Mm -hmm. As far as the lewd tubing part of it, like I've always, I've always been a very sexual person, but I've also had a lot of anxiety about that. A mm -hmm. lot of social anxiety, um, I get a lot of imposter syndrome uh, for for both streaming and doing anything lewd in real life or online. And I had talked to a few other people in the lewd tuber community, and probably the best recommendation I got was if you want to conquer that, you kind of have to. You do have to put yourself out there, but you can do it in a safe way in a space that you control. You know, you could do things like uh, lewd artwork or you know erotic fiction mm -hmm. or something like this. And I was super, super nervous the first couple of times I did it, but it turned out to be quite a lot of fun. And my community is just so, so supportive and wholesome. 
it's a lot of fun just to kind of sit around and talk during those streams. No, I think that you hit the nail on the head because uh, um, what I do with creating video games, it's that sort of same feeling of you want to have that that safe space of feeling creative and uh, sharing the things that you're into in a safe zone with other people that uh, may like the same thing that you like. Um, Absolutely. And seeing your community and how they interact it's it was actually one of the first times i've ever been to a server beside my own and seen that same vibe where everybody's just so wholesome and happy and and it's so weird in a way when you think about it from outside the box of like this is meant to be a loot server but everyone's so nice here because i guess that's the sort of mentality that we were sort of raised on which is like Lewd content's lewd, but then nobody realizes that the not safe work community is probably one of the most wholesome communities out of there. I absolutely. I actually made a pretty long Twitter rant at one point. I had heard um, someone else was telling a story about how they were uh, groped at a gas station, and whenever I hear something like that, it gets my blood boiling, mm. like honest to god boiling, and. It's something that I've discovered from interacting with people on Twitter and Twitch and in other spaces is that the the lewd community, um, they get a really bad rap. But if you want to find people who actually understand how things like consent and boundaries work, mm -hmm. they are the people to talk to, you know. Yeah, they're, you know, a lot of them are, are horny. A lot of them are, you know, going to be sharing artwork and stuff like that. But if it makes you uncomfortable and you tell them that, then they will adjust they absolutely will. Mm -hmm. um, I did want to ask, how have you felt in the space of particularly uh, VTubing, really, being gender non-conforming? Honestly, it's something that I was very worried about when I started. Because I, you know, I post my model all over the place. I post artwork of myself all over the place and it's always kind of a fear in the back of my mind where you know someone is going to come to my stream and they're going to see my model and then they're going to hear my voice and they're going to go oh whoa wait a minute what's going on here but honestly the the worst comment i have ever received was i didn't expect you to sound like that and that was it that was the beginning and end of it and that is perfectly valid mm -hmm. um the vtuber community there's actually a huge huge number of transgender and non-binary and non-conforming content creators in there and honestly it's really perfect for that community because you know if you're not comfortable with your own body you can design your body to be however you want you know i've seen quite a number of vtubers who aren't even human i think there's like seven or eight that are like dragon quest style slimes and the ability to make your avatar whatever you want it to be is very very freeing both if you're exploring your gender or if you just want to you know be something other than human for a little while so it's actually been a very supportive community for that and i mean there are some issues with it but it's usually from people outside the community that are mad about it no of course um i i'm glad that you know we're in a space where especially where you and I can talk about it in such a in such a comfortable way and I think that you know if you went back five ten years it would have been a very different space oh yeah for sure mm. um trans and gender issues have definitely got a lot more accepted um at least where I am uh much more recently and I think it's a good change I think that the acceptance is a really wonderful thing that's going on. I'll be honest, when I first listened to your stream, the first thing I thought was, oh no, she's hot. <laughs> I will take that as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> so you said that this persona has been with you for a while. How did you come up with the design of Gage? The first time I ever created Gage as a character was actually for a Dungeons and Dragons game, if you can believe that. That's I was so cool. Playing, 
oh, I'm a huge fucking D and D nerd. <laughs> I haven't played for a while. I'm almost starting to suffer withdrawals. <laughs> I want the shiny math rocks to make the click clack noise. <laughs> but I I had created her for this game and I I just really like the I've always liked the idea of the 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 cute tomboyish mechanic, the kind of wrench wench aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Ever since playing Mega Man Legends growing up, uh Roll Casket was one of my favorite characters. Um mm. so I I made her for this game and I I keep a big stable of all the characters that I've played that I really enjoy playing. So if I need a character in a hurry, I can always pull one of them out and say, okay, I'm ready to go. Um, so I played her there, and then I played her off and on in a couple different MMORPGs, and I got into erotic roleplay in those MMORPGs, and that's where the kind of lewd side started coming out. Mm -hmm. I don't remember exactly when I came up with her current outfit with the super low-cut overalls, but... I know that that was at least a couple years in the works, and I just really like how it shows a lot of skin without being kind of overtly sexual. It's a very cute kind of uh, lewdness, and I really appreciate that. What equipment do you use for VTubing? I've actually got a, a very basic setup. Um, I'm using a... Uh, I don't even remember the exact model of webcam the brand is nexago but i don't remember anything else about it i've got that and i've got a very simple boom mic and just a, a gaming pc that's a couple years old and needs upgraded um okay. so the the facial capture it's not the best facial capture you know if you're if you're seeing my video output my lip sync isn't the best um, i know a lot of people actually use iphones for their face capture because they have the best face capture software on the market right now. Mm -hmm. But no, I have a I have a very basic setup. So all you need all you need is a webcam and a mic and a computer and you can start VTubing, honestly. I I agree. I think if you've got the it's getting to the point now where there is easier and easier ways to become a VTuber, especially on a budget as well. Oh, for sure, for mm -hmm. sure. Um do you have any other outfits besides the outfit that you're wearing? Um, I do. Uh, I don't know if you're recording this for your video because they get steadily more not safe for work as you go down the list. You... I don't have any other safe for work outfits yet. Ah, okay. So obviously the other the other outfits are a little bit more um, risque than the one that you've obviously got. Yes. Ah, oh, okay. So, well, give me give me a brief description. Okay, so um, this is the one that I wear on Twitch, mm -hmm. and it's the only one that I wear on Twitch. When I do my lewd streams, I usually start with, um, I have a, a going commando outfit, which is just the overalls, but nothing underneath. Mm -hmm. So it's the very kind of naked apron kind of style. Mm -hmm. um, I also have a, a, fully, a fully nude model with... Um, it's as anatomically correct as I could make it with my limited art skills. Mm -hmm. And I also have one that uh, has some body writing on it because that is a minor kink of mine. So I wanted to express that. And I have one that is... Um, uh, in order to keep it more appropriate for YouTube, let's just say it is the Aftermath model. <laughs> <laughs> that is the... That is such an amazing way to describe it. I never. <laughs> That's so good. Um, wow. Okay. Uh, so, do you also have other locations that you usually go in, or do you normally just have this sort of like plain space that you're in now? I usually just have this plain space. Um, I have a uh, kind of an old machinist workshop. That's just a PNG that I grabbed off of Google, so I honestly don't know if that has any kind of copyright on it. Mm -hmm. I've been thinking of commissioning some backgrounds for things like maybe, you know, maybe a, a computer room or a bedroom or something like that, but I haven't really pulled the trigger on that because I don't really know what I want them to look like yet. Mm -hmm. But it is something I've been thinking about, and I've been talking to some other uh, some other VTubers about that, and got some ideas, and actually got some resources for that too. Oh, um, I know 
one one that I became pretty close friends with. Um, she streams with. Um, we're just gonna we're just gonna call it a casting couch, and I, I she gave me that asset. So if I ever wanted to put that on stream, I could. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, so Lootubers seem to be coming up in the ranks now against other VTubers. How are you finding the Lootuber scene? It's um, it's actually a very interesting scene. Most of the things that I've noticed is that anybody who identifies as a lewd tuber, and I mean specifically does not safe for work live content or pre-recorded content with their avatar, as mm -hmm. opposed to just being an artist, most of them do stream on multiple platforms. I think I have yet to see a single VTuber that doesn't stream on either Twitch or YouTube. But in the lewd tuber community, you also have... Um, people going to other websites, various cam sites. Um, and I know one website that was kind of getting some traction in that community was Plexstorm, mm -hmm. which you can think of it like Twitch, except they don't have any rules against nudity or sexual content on their streams. So that was something I considered for a while, but I feel like since I'm still building my community, I do want to stay on the websites with the largest user bases. No, that is completely understandable, especially for growth. Um, do you find that uh, there is something a little bit more personal about doing your not safe for work streams in your server in that regard? Absolutely, absolutely. I I recognize not every single name that shows up there because I have a bad memory and there's over a hundred members on my server, <laughs> but I do recognize most of the names that show up for those streams. And a lot of times it's honestly kind of strange in the context because I'll be, I'll be, you know, putting on a literal cam show and someone will pop in and I'll be like, Oh, Hey, how was your day? And, you know, talk to them a little bit, but it is also nice to have that kind of connection with your, your community. Um, that's something that, uh, being able to talk, openly and frankly and without judgment about things related to sex and lewdness is really really great and the fact that these people feel comfortable enough to talk to me about this kind of thing and let me talk to them about it is it's incredible so the other thing i wanted to ask you what games do you like streaming on twitch um i i call myself a variety streamer on twitch so i do try to keep a um a good backlog of games to play. I play a lot of role-playing games and I enjoy, I particularly enjoy the older ones from the PlayStation days because it lets me try to try to voice act the dialogue. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I've been interested in doing for a little bit. I also enjoy um, Metroidvanias are a huge, huge interest of mine. I love a good um, action platformer type game. And I have also been doing community nights where I've been playing party games with uh, with my uh, audience. Things like the Jackbox games or uh, Gartic Phone, Among Us, of course. Um, and I've specifically for October, I've been trying to pick up a stable of horror games to play. I know I'm going to be doing a lot of Dead by Daylight with my community, but I also want to do some Amnesia and some other survival horror type games specifically for that month. Yeah, I saw that you um, you have a specific space set up in your server for um, spooky month, as it were. Yes. <laughs> um, so are you also planning to do some not safe for work streams as well? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I don't know what sort of games I will be playing for those, if any, mm -hmm. but I am planning on getting a Halloween-themed model and oh. I, I'm looking forward to doing that. I've got some ideas for it. And I really need to sit down and work on it. But it should be pretty simple. And once I get that done, I'm hoping to do a model reveal, just a short little thing on Twitter, and start using that at the start of the month. And if everything goes as planned, I'm going to have a safe for work version for Twitch and a not safe for work version for my server. And it should be a lot of fun. Nice. Um. So tell me more about the lewd games that you've been playing. Honestly, I stayed away from lewd games for a long time. Not out of any distaste for the content, but because there was a lot of stuff that was like 
Most of them were visual novels, which are a fine enough type of game, but not something that I was interested in. Or they had mechanics in them, which um, I believe you actually put it in one of your reviews. They were lose to win mechanics. Mm -hmm. It seems like they're getting away from that now. So there's a lot of newer games that are coming out that I'm very, very interested in. Um, I started I started with Sword of Succubus, which mm -hmm. is a really fun... I, know, I think you reviewed it. It was a really fun uh, Zelda-type game. Um, I have, of course, done Shady Loot Cart, which is wonderful. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if I can rig up some kind of uh, janky local multiplayer over the internet thing to play with viewers. <laughs> um, and I'm also interested in several games that haven't come out yet. Future Fragments is on my radar. Castle in the Clouds is on my radar. Um, and I've been recommended a bunch from my community. Uh, Princess and Conquest was one of them. And I don't have the list handy, but I just I have a lot that I have to look through and see if anything piques my interest. It's so funny when you list games because I know all the developers personally. <laughs> you know all the developers. <laughs> yeah, the 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 creator of Future Fragments was the reason how I managed to find the hidden communities within the Not Safe Work gaming community. Oh wow! Um, he actually reached out to me and was like, "Oh, you do Not Safe Work content." And I was like, yeah, and he goes, you know, there's a place that we have. And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? And there was a, a dev server with like 500 other devs in it. And my mind was like <laughs> open. I was like, what the hell? And he he was kind of like the, the Willy Wonka to the chocolate factory sort of situation. <laughs> you know, I was like, I got a golden ticket. I don't know if I should Come deserve this sort of thing. And you'll see <laughs> yeah. the world of pure imagination <laughs> it was honestly <laughs> such a weird moment but to see how big the community's gotten now um and to see these little hidden areas across the internet and i and i guess uh yeah that's how i've managed to stay a little bit of the head of the curve when it comes to reviewing uh hentai games so if there's any games that you see that you're particularly interested in streaming, let me know because I probably will know the dev and they might be able to hook you up with something. Oh, I absolutely will. Thank you. Um, so I noticed that you're doing so much between doing Twitch streams, you're doing a bit of hentai game streams, you're doing some cam show stuff. How are you keeping up with all that? Um... I only sleep three hours a night. <laughs> no, but but seriously, um, it is actually tough sometimes. I, I work pretty close to full-time hours at my day job. Mm -hmm. So I, I try to do two streams on Twitch a week. I do an off-again, on-again community game night on my Discord, which is not streamed, but it's also not... Well, I mean, I can't say it's not lewd. We play Gartic Phone, and there's been a lot of lewds drawn during that, but it's not <laughs> like a cam show stream. Mm -hmm. And the the hentai game streams and the cam shows, those are usually one and the same. I'm I'm usually, I've got like my webcam up on one, and I'm streaming my screen on another source so people can watch uh, one or the other or both. So I I try to do those at the same time. And let me tell you, you would you would be surprised how difficult it is to uh, come in first in Shady Lude Cart when your chat is making your life very, very difficult. <laughs> um, but um, outside of that, it's um, it can be a little bit overwhelming at times. And I have had to take some weeks off every once in a while just to relax and do some self-care. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. I don't want to make it seem like I'm pushing myself for something I'm not passionate about, but burnout is a thing and i really can't afford to put anything else on my plate right now which is kind of unfortunate because i've been thinking about doing some more but i just i really don't have the time no i mean that's a good that's a good thing that you're registering that that could be an issue down the line and i think that mm. there's a lot of creators that don't and they push through and then that burnout will hit either way yeah mm. you're you're not you're not going to escape it. You're just borrowing time from next week and then the week after and the week after. Mm -hmm. And eventually you're, it's not going to be, you know, a hiatus for you to get some stuff done around the apartment and, you know, relax and 
clean yourself up and everything, it's going to be a crash where you don't get out of bed for a whole day because you're just so burnt out. Mm. What is a dream collab or stream that you would like to do, safe for work and not safe for work? Safe for work and not safe for work. Um, safe for work, the only real big name VTuber the the one that i really idolize and if they ever talk to me i would probably literally have a heart attack is iron mouse i would love to be able to interact with iron mouse even just to to talk with her but i would also love to sit down and you know play dead by daylight or just some other community game because she is just so so she is such a wonderful gremlin and i look up to her so much you know just She's just a wonderful person, and I would love to be able to know her better. As far as not safe for work streams go, I actually don't know very many, uh, very many lewd tubers. I mean, of course, there's Project Melody, and everybody knows Project Melody at this point. Mm -hmm. But I think that I think that the difference in the level of tech that we have for our motion capture and stuff would make anything there really awkward because she's got full body motion capture and I can't even move my arms yet. But there are a couple smaller lewd tubers that I follow and follow me back. And if they ever wanted to do something where like we collab on a cam show or something like that, or I know there's uh, functions on some of the Bluetooth toys where you can link them together where input to one creates an output on the other or something like that. Some of the smaller creators, if they ever wanted me to do something like that with them, I think that would be a lot of fun. We are actually working on integrating Lovent's toys to particularly Shady Lucart for force feedback control in the near future. Um, I... I, I heard I am very, very excited about this fact. <laughs> oh, well, then my, my next question is, I assume you'd be interested in being a test subject in the future. So I will definitely I put would, you in the yes column. I would absolutely love to test that for you. <laughs> um, which do you prefer to stream? Do you prefer to stream safe for work or not safe for work? I think I prefer not safe for work. Not because I prefer the content so much as I have to hold myself back a lot on Twitch. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would want to do cam shows all the time, but I have to watch what I say. I have to watch the jokes that I make or the references that I make. Or, you know, if someone drops a particularly good piece of art in my Discord server or something, I have to be, you know, I, I can't show it on Twitch. Mm -hmm. I actually had a little bit of a scare during my birthday stream. Um, streamer mode on Discord actually saved me. I opened up Discord to um, get my friend back on my screen because we were collabing. And on my screen, it opened to our DMs, which uh, had front and center some birthday art of me that was very much not safe for work. <laughs> but I went back and rewatched the VOD, and I think that the streamer mode actually prevented it from showing that DM. So I'm pretty sure I'm safe there. Oh. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Thank thank goodness for technology, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so with streams, particularly with Bluetubers, they are known for using toys to interact with viewers. Do you find it tough mm. to make it through some sessions with your chat? And can they be mean to you in a good way? Uh, yes and yes. <laughs> um. I actually, after my uh, Twitch birthday stream yesterday, I did a private Discord stream, and I actually had to end up uh, turning off the toy early because I was, I was getting a little sore. Nothing, nothing bad, but it's very easy to get overwhelmed with that when someone else has control and they like to make you make the funny noises. Mm -hmm. But um, at the same time, I do think that I, I actually like that. It's very exciting to have that control taken away from you and given to someone else. Someone that you, I mean, it's basically anonymous at that point, And it's very kind of thrilling. And they, they have been known to, to, be, to be a little bit mean to me, where they will turn, turn the intensity up for a little bit until you know, they can hear from my voice that, I'm I'm getting particularly into it, and then just okay, we're going back to low for the next five minutes, and it's like, oh, motherfucker. 
Um, what are some games that you play outside of streaming? Outside of streaming, um, I don't actually play a whole lot just out of time concerns. Normally, when I get home from work, if I'm not going to stream, I like to watch other people stream and just go and reduce the quality of their chat. But I do know that I'm a big fan of uh, puzzle games. Mm -hmm. I, I love me some good puzzle games, and those are something that I don't really think I make good content for on Twitch because it's usually me staring at a screen for 15 minutes working things out in my head until I hit that aha moment and then solve the puzzle instantly. Mm -hmm. So I, I definitely like playing some of those off stream. But at this point, if I'm going to play something that's higher action, I usually like to do that on stream. When you're not streaming at all, and obviously when the persona is off, uh besides video games what are you doing in real life to I, I guess in terms of enjoyment besides obviously streaming besides streaming um i do enjoy also um of course tabletop role playing and board games in real life uh, unfortunately the covid the covid pandemic has kind of put the damper on that we can't really travel and have friends over to play mm -hmm. but i when we can i really enjoy doing stuff like that um, I also enjoy um, uh, building with Legos, actually. I have a substantial collection of Lego kind of spread out all around my computer desk, and I'm always looking to get more because uh, I have a problem. <laughs> nah, Outside of that... that, that's a good problem, though. That's a good problem. <laughs> that's a good problem for everything but my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, is there any anything else beside that? Um, well, I mean, I like to, you know, catch up on anime and uh, other, you know, geek media, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I have been trying to get more involved with our local kink community. Mm -hmm. Um, but that has also been difficult due to rising COVID numbers in our areas. Um, there was actually supposed to be a, a meetup today at a restaurant, but due to COVID concerns, it had to be canceled. So I'm trying to reconnect with that community and uh, meet up with more like-minded people in real life too. Oh, that <laughs> that's such a wholesome thing. <laughs> <laughs> you say that, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously there's another side to that coin, obviously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I feel that you kind of answered this question, I guess, a little bit uh, in the Ludtuber scene. Is there someone you look up to or any people that you would like to give a shout out to? Specifically in the lewd tuber scene. Um, that's an interesting question. There is one person that I would definitely like to give a shout out to. Um, he and I don't interact very much, but mm -hmm. he was a very big help to me when I started. So I'm going to apologize in advance to him if, if this makes him uncomfortable, but there is a, a streamer who goes by Dommy Woof. Okay. And I, I ended up joining his Discord server, and I was asking a lot of questions about uh, lewd tubing in general and you know my anxiety as it relates to sex. And he was very, very um, considerate and very, very helpful and uh, a big part of the reason that I actually started doing what I'm doing now. So, you know, he and I don't interact very much. He doesn't follow me on Twitter. He doesn't sub to me on Twitch or anything like that. We're not very close friends. But for anyone who's interested in that kind of content, specifically a more kink-related content, I can very heartily recommend him. He's a very wonderful person, and he has never done wrong by me. Oh, oh that's a... I'll make sure to also put that link... Uh, for viewers to check out um you were saying before um in terms of D D, you were saying that the character you you created was originally for D D. have you ever thought about doing a, a lewd D D session i actually have done a few they weren't um they weren't super overtly lewd Mm -hmm. But back in college, um, the D&D &D group that I, uh, I kind of uh, fell into um, 
and th th this is this is a fun story. Um, I actually met my first long-term partner from that group, and um, no names to keep everything anonymous, but uh, we actually ended up swinging with the DM of that group and his wife. Wow. So they were they were very much into the kind of erotic side of D and D. Um, we um, we picked up. There's actually some third party source books for that, like the Book of Erotic Fantasy, that have more sexual related spells and monsters and things like that. And we use those in our games. There's yeah. never been any that have been really focused on it, but there's a lot of things like uh, dealing with succubi and things like that. Mm. Oh, that's. That's awesome to hear that there's such a positivity in that side too. Cause I feel again, um, like we were saying earlier that, you know, that there, there still is to this day, uh, a little bit of a stigma when it comes to, um, sexualizing things, but I'm, I'm glad to hear that, you know, you had an experience within something that you liked in that particular way. It's it's honestly the more I th the, every time I bring it up I have to think about it how it's kind of funny where everybody has this vision of like D and D players as these you know forever alone sexless losers and getting into Dungeons and Dragons directly led to me losing my virginity so uh, take that I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is some advice for an aspiring YouTuber? My advice to anybody who's looking to get into lewd content creation, and specifically the, the kind of virtual cam show stuff that uh, I've been doing, is it is a very freeing experience to be able to express that side of yourself, mm -hmm. but it is also something that can be very nerve-wracking. So I would recommend testing the waters, um, honestly, probably doing something like I do with my Discord streams first. If you've, if you've already built up a community around yourself as a safe for work streamer, um, you can test the waters by, by seeing if there's any interest in adding not safe for work channels to your discord, seeing who's all okay with that. And if people are okay with that and you're interested in doing virtual cam shows, you could uh, set up a channel for that and do private streams on discord and just kind of test the waters and see where it goes. Mm -hmm. If you've got a big enough community and especially if you put yourself out there as an 18 plus streamer, even if you don't do sexual content, chances are you've got some people in your community that would be interested in that kind of content. But um, definitely do some research and and uh, test things out on the small scale first before you make an account with many vids or something like that. Of course. Um, is there, besides the costume change that you were talking about, is there any particular uh, project on the horizon that you would say that you're um, willing to share with us or any particular project that you're, you're working on in terms of your uh, VTubing and LooTubing? I have a few things that are kind of on the back burner that I really need to work on. Aside from the, the costume change for October, and getting a, uh, there's a, a controller called a leap motion that detects your hand and arm movements. So I can actually, you know, keep my arms from clipping into my tools every five seconds. Aside from getting that done, I have some other assets that I want to add to my model. Um, a Fudinari gauge might be a thing sometime in the future. Mm -hmm. I've also been thinking of making some more casual outfits and I need to go in and edit my model a little bit in Unity. The base of the model was made in Vroid, but that only goes so far, and her proportions aren't quite right. Basically, my ass is not big enough, and I have to change that in Unity. Oh, okay. So, so you've actually done that sort of uh, Unity work before? Very, very little. Mm -hmm. um, I've never done any kind of game development, but all of the accessories on my model, the goggles, the armband, and the tools on the, my belt... I had to add those in Unity because Vroid itself doesn't support that yet. So I commissioned a friend to make some 3D assets, and then I imported them into Unity, added them to my model, and re-exported it so I could use it with my motion capture software. Oh, well, I mean, that just shows that, you know, even with simple uh, people that you know and simple uh, simple changes, 
almost anybody can become a VTuber in however they want to look. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. You can... It's something something that I bring up to people when they say that VTubing has to be, you know, super expensive. And, I mean, the answer is no. If you, if you count my hardware, excluding the computer, which I already had, I spent maybe $80 on hardware. And most of that was the microphone, honestly. For my avatar itself, it cost me $240, and all of that was the accessories. Literally everything on my avatar except for the goggles, the armband, and the tools on my belt were completely free and made by me. So the more the more that you can do yourself, the cheaper it's going to be. You might have to outsource a few things, but you don't need a you know a three thousand dollar live two D model to get started. You can actually find great success with just a reactive PNG or you know a three D model made in Vroid. Before we end this interview, I would like to give you the floor to not only promote your SafeWorks streams, any socials, but also your server and your not SafeWorks streams. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, pretty much everything that I do is actually collected in one place. I made myself a little Linktree page, and I believe that is uh, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E forward slash gauge underscore uh, Neumann. Mm -hmm. That should have links to my Twitter, my Twitch, my kind of really scuffed YouTube, as well as my Discord server, and a few other things. I think I have my Curious Cat on there. I have an F list as a resource for artists. It's all collected in one place. Um, all of them are 18 plus, although I do try, at least on my Discord, to make the really spicy stuff more opt-in, because I know not everybody's comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. Gage, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to have a chat with me. Honestly, Shades, the pleasure is mine. Thank you very much for having me on your show. <laughs> and to everybody watching at home, go check out those links. Go check out Gage. And thank you so much for listening. We will see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.